Say, Mr. Smith, wasn't it in 1919 that the Bell system began to use the dial telephone? Well, 1919 was the year the Bell system committed itself to dial and, and to installing machine switching, but it wasn't, the uh, first one wasn't put in until 1921. 1920, that was the year when all the production work was done and, and work was actually started. Oh, 1920 was really quite a year. A sad year, it was the year that Teddy Vale died. That's the year I saw one of the finest movies I've ever seen, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. It was also the year that Illinois Bell Tele... What a memory. You've been impressed by someone with a phenomenal memory at one time or another. Someone who has a memory as sticky as flypaper and who comes up with facts upon request. Well, Western Electric has something to beat that. The memory in ESS. What a memory. We help the Bell System companies provide fast, accurate service with what we make. And as anyone at Hawthorne knows, one big part of the product load is central office switching equipment. Memory units are important parts of ESS central office equipment. A central office handles calls from and to all the telephones in a particular area. To complete a call, the outgoing calls are either switched to another line in that office or transferred to another central office where the telephone line of the party being called can be found. Without central offices, you'd need a wire from your phone to every other phone you'd want to call. The newest kind of central office is called ESS, Electronic Switching System. Let's compare a central office to the functions of a switchboard operator. Switchboard operators complete calls by either plugging in plugs or by punching buttons. They're fast and efficient. They know what to do when someone calls and asks for a number, or perhaps just for a name. But they can handle only one number at a time, either making a connection or putting the caller on hold until a line is free. Suppose you had a super operator like Sadie. Alongside the other operators, she's like ESS when you compare it with step-by-step -step switching systems. Much faster. And she has more to offer. She is so efficient, she can handle the switchboard of a large building as fast as the calls come in. She works so quickly, she has time to complete all sorts of other chores, like making sure the central office equipment is working all right and she still has time to take care of other important jobs. But that's not all she does. When she receives an incoming call, she receives instructions to write the number calling and the number called on a board, just so she'll remember them. When she's made the connection, she passes the information along for billing and then erases it so that the space is available for another call. She's trained by a program manual that she turns to regularly and which tells her what to do next. She doesn't really need to be very intelligent since the manual does the brain work for her. All she does is keep on trucking. As she goes through all these operations, she's like several pieces of the equipment in an ESS office. Her manual, which tells her what to do, is like the 1A or 2B. A piece of equipment called a scanner whirs away looking for any changes in telephone line conditions. It asks other equipment what to do, then does it. ESS even maintains itself, asking whether the line is good and what ESS services the customer has bought. One of the important parts of ESS is the 1A or 2B memory module. Instead of a handwritten or printed manual, there are computer programs set up electronically. These programs are stored in these memories on memory cards. The programs count the calls, store billing information, or pass it on, and they maintain the system. This is where they're like Sadie's blackboard. Any electronic memory system is based on the binary number system of zero and one. When you make a pattern or combine several possibilities of zero and one, and give that pattern a meaning, then you have a code for what would be a spoken word or sentence. These codes are stored on the memory cards. To use the memories, you must get to the words 
stored on the cards. Here's the way you read the memory. Each core is a kind of electric traffic crossing for two sets of wires. Each core is connected to a copper tape loop called a solenoid, a kind of side street where you find one word. Smaller streets of twister wire cross each solenoid. A memory card magnet with one bit or part of a word lies over the junction of the solenoid and the twister wire. When one core is chosen by sending a current through both plane and transverse wires, the electrical current is picked up by the solenoid and sent all the way around. As the current comes to each twister wire intersection, it either has the same magnetic value the adjoining magnet has, or it has the opposite value. If it is the same, it makes no current flow and is a zero. If it is opposite, there is a current flow through the twister wire, and it is a one. A reading unit called a readout amplifier reads each of the 44 wire pairs to see what the word is and to send the message of what to do to the right place. For instance, all the words on one plane might do nothing more than tell the scanner that someone has picked up a ringing phone so it can stop the ringing signal. 16 memories go together to help form a program store. Each program store has 131,072 words in the 16 memories. ESS can't change its mind, but we can change its memory. To change the memory record, you must change a memory card or more than one card. This gives the scanner the information it needs to pass on to complete the call, to provide any extra ESS services the customer has bought, and to handle billing information so the phone company is paid. ESS's answer to Sadie's super operator can read any of these words in only five and one half millionths of a second. That means it can read almost 182,000 words per second. That's all the words in one whole program store in less than three quarters of a second. Try that out on Sadie and see what happens. And ESS's memory is either the 1A or the 2B memory. Let's take a look at how they're put together. The shops for the 1A and 2B memories and the memory cards are on the second floor of several Hawthorne Works buildings. The memory structure is made up of twister wire cable and wired planes. We'll start first with a twister wire assembly. Permalloy wire, 64 thousandths of an inch in diameter, is reduced to 14 ten thousandths in three passes. Heat treatments between two passes bring back its toughness and resilience. The wire is then flattened to become a ribbon tape only five thousandths of an inch wide and three ten thousandths inch thick. This permalloy ribbon is wrapped in a spiral around a three thousandths inch copper wire at 12,000 revolutions per minute. There are 94 wraps in each inch. A completed memory has 7,841,856 wraps. There are only three and a half wraps under each magnet to provide one part of each word. After this come tests to be sure it conforms to memory characteristics. In the laminating room, the trays of wire are assembled into load banks where the 44 readout pairs are embedded in a flexible insulated mylar tape in rolls up to 2,500 feet in length. Visual inspection takes place on a machine which allows the operator to see any lumps, cuts, or foreign material. From here, the twister cable goes on to the missing wrap detector. It tells if there are three or more consecutive spiral wraps missing in any of the 44 twister wires. The twister cable monitor test checks to be sure each of the wires is the right distance from adjoining wires. A resistance test determines whether each wire is the proper size. And a shorts test makes sure there is no contact or any electrical bridge between wires, such as a stray piece of wire. 
The cable is cut into 80 foot lengths in its final preparation for later application to the plane. Then this machine notches the plastic cable to make room for card guides and locating blocks that will be attached to the plane later on. The second mainstream of assembly is the mica plane assembly. Eight terminals are set into pre-drilled holes and epoxied to secure them. Application of a permaloy shield to both sides of the mica plane assures that the magnetic signals will be kept where they belong when the memory is finally used. A solenoid sheet goes over the permaloy shield. The solenoid is made of 64 copper ribbons set into an insulated tape. A double face adhesive sheet with paper backing is applied. The protective paper backing will be removed later to add the twister cable to the plane. This part called the comb is attached to the plane. A single core has been placed on each finger of the comb and the bias wire is attached. Drive wires are threaded through the cores and attached to the terminals. Soldering is done by two new machines, one for each side of the plane. Now that the cable and the plane are assembled, it's time to attach the cable to the plane. Two of the already prepared 80-foot cables are needed for each memory. Great care is taken to place the cables in exactly the right position. Additional parts are also added here. The T-block, the stop block, and the card guides allow insertion of the programmed memory cards in exactly the right position in the finished memory unit so that the memory card magnets are at the intersection of the solenoids and the twister wires. Repairs are made when necessary. Now the memory begins to take its basic shape. Spacing bars will keep the planes apart. Bottom, top, and end plates provide protection and make handling easier. In the cable terminating area, cable ends are prepared by exposing the wires in the cable and attaching each wire separately to this terminal strip. The wires are inserted into sleeves already containing a solder ring and are soldered to a terminal. Four terminal strips are mounted in a bracket, now called a terminal block. The information readout is done from this block. Testing shows whether there is an uninterrupted flow of electricity through the wires and the terminals. Transverse or horizontal wiring is next. A core is switched by sending current through both the plane and the transverse wires of that core. This spring will hold the memory card flat against the plane to make contact. The insulation resistance test finds any shorts between any wires which have scraped insulation and are touching. This elastic compound dries to a rubbery consistency to keep the cores in place. Otherwise, the cores could move and damage the fine wires. 
the core cover provides final protection. And there you have it, a memory ready for final shop testing. A final test of every core makes sure you can get to all the words stored. These words provide all the combinations a telephone office might require. Remember, each part of a word, called a bit, is located on a magnet lying over the street intersection of the solenoid and the twister wires. Quality review auditors make constant checks, and quality assurance testers, who report to New York and act in behalf of the telephone companies, check to be sure our quality is within prescribed standards. Now the memory unit is ready for shipment to another Western Electric location. There it will become part of a program store. The program store provides the memory program and translation information used by the telephone office central control in a number one or number two electronic switching system. Finished memories are like a newborn baby. They remember nothing yet because they've been given nothing to remember. That's where the memory cards come in. They feed in information to the memory in a way similar to events in a person's life. The difference between them and a person is that they have a permanent memory. They don't forget, though they can be changed. Each memory has 128 cards. 64 of them are 1A cards, and 64 are 2A cards. They are mirror images of each other and are placed face to face in the memory. This is done to get maximum use from the memory. Now we'll look at the steps necessary to make and program the memory cards. There are two processes used to place the Vicoloy magnets on the memory cards, chemical and mechanical. We'll follow each one through. First, let's look at the chemical process. Once the sheets of Vicoloy and an adhesive are cut into work-size pieces, the Vicoloy is racked for washing. Aluminum blanks are similarly cleaned with the addition of an acid. The washing removes any surface dirt which could mean a poor bond or no bond at all at some point along the way. After use, both the soap washes and the acid are neutralized before draining into the sewer. The operation yields clean waste so that we do not pollute. Incidentally, the toxic materials used in these washes require use of proper safety devices such as this closing and emergency sprays in case of accidental splashing. The aluminum blanks are unracked into piles of 50 in preparation for making the sandwiched memory card. The card layup goes like this. Next, the bundles of 50 cards are pressed. Proper pressure adjustment is critical here in order to assure a good bond. Individual breakdown of the cards reveals defects to the trained eye of this inspector. Cards with obvious faults cannot be repaired and must be junked. The magnet pattern is silk screened on the card at this point using an acid resistant ink. The ink resist must be of a certain viscosity. A pattern checker examines one out of five, checking for defects such as halos, intrusions, protrusions, and pinholes. A four-corner check by the machine setter determines whether application is done correctly. The oven drying which follows dries the ink in preparation for the next critical operation, etching. Occasional magnet measurement by the etcher operator serves as a check for bad cards. Defects passing this point will probably pass through the whole process, resulting in waste product, 
since this is the last point at which the bonded card can be recycled. The etched cards are degreased, then removed to the detailing area where several operations are performed. A four-point location check is conducted with these TV cameras. If there is doubt about their placement, they are placed under a microscope which has better image resolution. There is a visual check to find defects within the field of 2,880 magnets. Any cards which have a bow in them are flattened. A Teflon coat is applied. The cards are stamped for identification. An electrical test is conducted to find defective or missing magnets and to discover vicaloy which does not meet specifications. Cards are checked for burrs and dents, which can cause damage when the card is inserted into the memory. The cards are then ready for shipment to quality review. The newly developing mechanical process is simpler and uses more of each vicaloy sheet. The process requires just about the same amount of operator attention as the chemical process. The adhesive is applied, trimmed to size, and the excess is cleaned off. Cards are stamped to identify them as 1A cards or 2A cards, after which the adhesive is pre-cured to assure a secure bond between the vicaloy and the card. The magnets are punched out in four separate punches on this machine. Vicaloy sheets presently can be used for two sets of magnets. Soon we will use the sheets for four punch outs before discarding the rest of the sheet. There's no chemical waste to deal with. When the magnets have been transferred to the aluminum sheets, they're placed in the curing cabinet, where about 450 are cured at a time. The mylar coating is applied here. When excess mylar has been removed, the cards are flattened and checked. Inspection has demonstrated the cards are of better quality because of the higher accuracy of placement and the fewer defective magnets in this process. The cards are coated with Teflon to make handling easier. A location check is conducted to be sure that the vicaloy is properly positioned. Then the cards are subjected to an electrical test before the final visual inspection. The McMav room is where cards are programmed with the electronic language of the particular ESS office where they will be used. These are the events or happenings the memories are to recall. These are some of the tapes and program cards used to place the proper ESS program on the memory cards. The correct tape for number one ESS or number two ESS or the cards for number 101 ESS are placed on the machine and are run through to signal the equipment what value each magnet shall have. 128 cards, 64 1As and 64 2As are placed face to face. This card set is lifted by a specially designed holder which loads the set of cards into the programming equipment.
Some cards are handled individually. Damaged cards from the field need to be replaced. Program changes in any of the systems may require changes in one or more individual cards. When programmed, the cards are placed in racks in these specially designed cases, which are cushioned to avoid damage in shipment. The cards are shipped to the telephone office which needs them to provide the telephone service you may use yourself if your telephone central office has ESS. ESS offers a number of services not available in either the step-by-step -step or the crossbar equipment. ESS will let you do all sorts of things older equipment doesn't. If you call a friend and find his line is busy, you can hold. He'll get a signal he has a call waiting. When he completes his conversation and hangs up, you'll automatically be connected. There's an add-on feature that allows you to call a third party into your conversation. For those numbers you frequently dial, ESS makes it possible to dial only four digits instead of seven. And if you want to make a four-way conference call, you can set it up without an operator's assistance. Going to be at a different telephone for a while? Just dial the proper code and your calls will be transferred to the number you designate until you signal that you're back. There are many more people involved than you've seen here, and there are some operations we didn't show. Each operation and each operator is important. One person who doesn't care, or one job done poorly, affects the final product. Incidentally, each finished memory unit is worth about as much as a color TV set, a refrigerator, and a dishwasher. You're helping expand the present fine telephone service of the Bell system into even finer service for the future. The record of these shops is exemplary, under difficult circumstances, in uncertain times. Everyone involved who is doing his job deserves a special salute. What a memory! The memory units and the memory cards together. And they come from the many fine workers, engineers, and supervisors at the Hawthorne Works.